this is Mario with MIA Microflight and in this video I am showing this uh, tiny helicopter this is one of my own designs that I did more than I would say 10 years ago and I used to sell these in kit form uh, during the time that the uh, micro heli revolution uh, began and started with these uh, micro helicopters then we went to a sub micro which is what this one is in terms of size and then we went to bomb size helicopters and then all these other companies around the world started manufacturing similar helicopters and then MIA Microflight started selling upgrades which were basically our own uh, original parts uh, fiberglass uh, frames, carbon frames, tough landing gear as you should see here uh, canopies and all, all kinds of upgrades that we started selling for the influx of micro helis and bomb size helis that were coming out from other companies and we sold those as upgrades to make them better you can uh, research that via Google uh, search and you can probably find a lot of the stuff that we did which we also have some at our new website I think. anyway the reason for talking about this particular product is because I wanted to point out that I have never been uh, fond of electronic stabilization which is what was introduced in later years of the micro heli revolution to effect stabilizing uh, features on a helicopter without resorting to a fly bar as you see it now this is uh, called a fly bar so I use weights at the end of the fly bar those are called uh, bell stabilizers but you also have paddles and that's another invention that was done uh, in later years to also provide stabilization but also be able to control psychically the uh, position of the helicopter in reference to the rotor via this wash. Now I've been very very pro mechanical stabilization where provided it's done uh, properly. In this particular one the way I designed this, I designed this as a one piece fly bar as provisions here for weights. So I've been pro the mechanical stabilizer because like I said there's not much that can go wrong here. The stabilizer always uh, sits in place and provided like I said everything's done uh, securely fastened to the rotor that's not going anywhere. However, on an electronic stabilization, you're bound by the stabilizing features that uh, uh, electronic chips have to do for you. And so they uh, send signals to the control mechanism, when, which in this case, for example, is the, uh, the squash plate. And they feed that to the servos that control the squash plate, those, those signals based on how the sensors are able to uh, sense the, the position and the, uh, the movement, the, the speed, uh, you know, etc. So, all those things are fed to the microprocessor in the control unit of the toys or devices and that in turn sends the proper signals to stabilize the control mechanical control system of the aircraft and so when you rely on that anything that can go wrong uh, electronically uh, eventually will, will go wrong at some point and when you lose that capability of stabilization you no longer have what you have here the solid mechanical feature of this type of stabilizers uh, like I said this is my my own stabilizer it's a one piece done as a one piece fiberglass plate with the paddles there that do provide not only stabilization but control this is called uh, also the Bell uh, Hiller system Hiller uh, was the inventor of the, the paddle control system and uh, Bell was the inventor of the fly bar with the Bell that's the Bell 47G helicopters back in the uh, early 40s I think it was so I am pro mechanical stabilization on anything that requires gyroscopic uh, stabilization uh, such as uh, helicopters. Now you can also do the stabilization on flybarless helicopters on the blades themselves on the tip of the leading edge of the blades you know you have these extra weights that make the blade a little bit heavier and provides gyroscopic stabilization that way. So you can also rely on that because you have the the weight system embedded into the blade in this case for me this is a lot better because you have done the blade system embedded into the um, into the, the, the fly bar uh, stabilizer. Now, some people uh, may say that uh, fly bars are less uh, efficient because uh, you know they're slower to react. I'm not going to get into that. What I'm mainly talking about is from a mechanical standpoint here. If you lose the electronic stabilization, if something goes wrong in your electronic circuitry, your helicopter has no way to, to recover from that because you no longer have the stabilization that a mechanical one provides. With that in mind, I'm going to show you something else. And I think it all makes sense, but I wanted to bring this out because this is important to understand 
the concept behind mechanical stabilization before I go on to my next explanation that deals with uh, hoverboards. Okay, we're back at the hoverboard end of things. This is a go-kart that I put uh, together really quick using a, a functional uh, hoverboard. This board uh, could have been repaired and I could have used it as a uh, a standard hoverboard but I decided not to do that for the uh, simple reason that these things are really not safe at all. If you understand how these things work, put a little more emphasis on, on um, a little more thought into that, you know you're going to be uh, having a second thought next time you get on top of one of these things uh, because these are controlled uh, electronically through electronic stabilizers or these little IC chips that do a uh, gyroscopic um, stabilization. In each of the boards that uh, make up for the um, make up for the the control system, which is through these uh, ports here, and they use these um, sensors that sense the the pressure of the when you step on this, it pushes a rubber peg into a electronic eye, and that senses a signal to either turn on or turn off the on features of the the motor. So it turns on forward, turns on backward, and, and likewise at the other end, and that's how you control these things. Once again, you have electronic stabilization on these boards. When these things go bad, if you happen to be standing on top, or if you lose a balance here, and even a kid, I've seen uh, heavy people uh, get on these things, and, and they get hurt. You risk these things uh, going bad, losing control, and, and there you go. You know, if you're not wearing the proper equipment, you know, you you risk a serious, serious injury with these things. And even the labels underneath some of these, you know, they tell you, you know, risk of death or injury, serious injury. Be cautious about that. So, I, you know, these things are not safe. These are not your typical segways. You know, segways have a lot more electronic and a lot more serious uh, components there, that uh, and that's why they're more more expensive to stabilize it and have the additional safety built into the uh, stabilization system. So, but these things are done at the very minimal levels because they're trying to keep the cost down and, and make it attractive, you know, for, you know, the toy market and the young people and, and uh, just for fun. So, but when, when these things go, I mean, you can look at all the videos of people getting hurt on these things. Not only that, you know, you have some units that are caught on fire because of the charging systems that are involved in these uh, uh, controllers. Some are not as as, uh, as clever at detecting um, either a short or an open in the cells themselves, and some are better at charging, some are not. So, uh, you know, there's so many things that that uh, have happened with these uh, hoverboards in uh, in the past year since since they came out. Now we are at 2020 here, uh, September 2020. And these things have come out long, long before, but these things are about 10, 10 years old, I think, since they first started showing up. They were very popular then. They're still popular. People are still buying them. But companies have come out and done uh, all these uh, uh, external contraptions, you know, to make it look like a go-kart. And there's so many videos that talk about that, too. Though that's a little more safer because now they've taken the, the hoverboard and they're just using this for uh, support to a frame. Uh, very similar to what I have here, but you know you still have uh, the the possibility of um, uh, the issue with the charging and all those other things that I talked about uh, of the hoverboard. In terms of uh, electronic stabilization, I've never been uh, pro for the reasons that I explained earlier in the first part of this vi video. Using a helicopter uh, flybar is is a, is a reference, and so likewise anything that that uh, requires electronic stabilization, you know, I question that, and uh, it's just a matter of w waiting for that for that day. When that stabilizer ceases to stabilize the, the unit, whatever it may be, whether it's uh, something moving on wheels or something moving, you know, through the through the air like a like an aircraft, and if it's carrying a person, you know, you have to wonder about the risks involved. Now, talking about risks involved in electronic stabilization, this is one of the uh, the least uh, the least of my concerns here, but I wanted to bring this out because. Um, because these uh, these do use electronic stabilizers, and it's better to just get them out like I did here. Uh, make yourself a, a car like this, not a not a wannabe go kart, you know, with the you know with with those attachments that they use. So you you buy the attachments. You you know, if you want to go that way, I, I guess you could go that way. But to me, it's better if you, especially if you have an older unit that's not working, uh, just get it out completely and use uh, separate controllers on each wheel. 
these are brushless um, motors inside uh, the, the wheel so you use uh, one brushless controller for each wheel and that's how you control this and this is how I'm controlling this and basically you can make yourself a go-kart very similar to this one not a three-wheeler but a full go-kart uh, that you can control it like a go-kart that has steering that has positive stability on the four wheels and this is the reason that why I did this is a four-wheeler and not a three-wheeler because three-wheelers you only have one wheel in the front and when, anytime you deal with three wheelers, you know you don't have the same uh, distribution of weight as you do with a four wheeler, and so this is the reason why I did this four wheeler. And you can watch some of those videos that, that I talk about the construction of this uh, as well. I pu I'll put a link to all those videos also on this video. But getting back to stabilization here, uh, let, let's talk about uh, quadcopters, for example. Quadcopters have embedded the stabilization in the microprocessor board, which is the, the heart of the system that controls all the four motors if you're using a four-rotor um, uh, quadcopter, quadcopter meaning four. <clears throat> so that stabilizer is all, also electronics. If you're using something similar, and I've seen people use similar controllers to lift themselves up with much bigger motors, much bigger propellers. You know, all you have to do is basically resize that according to the weight, and you have yourself, uh, you know, your own aircraft that you can uh, assemble uh, with a little, you know, mechanical uh, savvy and know-how uh, using a similar process to or similar assembly in method as we do with the uh, quad rotors if you were building, a, you know, your own quad rotor. So it's, it's very easy to buy those components, especially these days. That we have access to so many, so many parts and so many, so much uh, technology, fairly inexpensive. So you can build the same and lift yourself up with four rotors. Now the problem is that those controllers, you know, should anything fail electronically in, in that uh, uh, controller, you're risking your life basically at that point, depending on how you are. And so that is the other reason why I'm not pro electronic stabilization. I much rather build myself. A, a typical uh, helicopter with blades and a mechanical stabilizer. Um, uh, you, you, at the benefit that that mechanical stabilizer, that fly bar, is going to provide my stabilizer mechanically. And so to me, mechanical stabilization from that perspective is a lot more attractive. And so I'm pro mechanical stabilizers. Getting back to this. Next time you get one, on one of these, or you're, you're, you're uh, thinking of getting on one of these things, consider that, that uh, if indeed one of these electronic components do go bad, indeed they do go bad on these units, there is that risk. And uh, there are so many videos that show people getting hurt on these things, from these things getting going bad in the process of them uh, using it, and some people just falling off these things because, you know, they can't maintain uh, stability. It's kind of crazy. If you're going to try one of these, at least, like I said, make something like this and you have a much, much safer unit and you are still exploiting the safer features of the product, which are the wheels, provided they are covered because this, these covers do provide a level of safety so you don't get your fingers caught in between uh, the, the wheels and the, and the frame. Um, much the same as the Razor scooters have covers you know, to cover the... the um, the belts and the chains especially because you don't want somebody getting caught you know their finger in the chain uh, similar to these things here and that's the reason why I'm, I'm using these covers on this uh, revamp uh, uh, hover board just using the motors with separate speed controllers um, handle for the throttle and you know a uh, really quick and dirty uh, frame here that uh, that allows me to sit here and still enjoy the uh, mechanics uh, of this uh, system but on a four-wheel architecture. I wanted to put this out there because uh, I have not seen too many people talk about uh, you know stability and the pros and cons of electronic and mechanical stabilization so I wanted to cover that and I hope this is uh, clear enough and that's the reason why I started with the, the little helicopter you know the bumblebee which is my product. I developed uh, many years ago, but I think it that gives uh, an overall uh, perspective on why mechanical stabilization is a lot more attractive when you really think about it. This is Mario with MIA Microflight. Once again, stay tuned for more.